on, we're on, we're live. We're live, we're on, we're being recorded. So mind your manners, mind your business, and uh, let's start with uh, let's start with prayer. It's not a Bible study unless you have a crying baby. Or church unless there's a crying baby. All right, let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks today for an opportunity to learn your word. Uh, to uh, mark it, uh, inwardly digest it, and know that uh, from it uh, you have given us your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and rose again. Um, we give you thanks uh, this day for bringing us together to read uh, and learn about Joshua, uh, your, your servant who led your people Israel into the promised land, uh, who fought for Israel, uh, and, and who... Um, uh, did everything that you commanded. Um, we ask, Lord, that um, as your servants, you would enlighten our hearts to hear your word as Joshua did and firmly believe it, um, that our sins have been forgiven by your son, Jesus Christ, and that we too will uh, uh, we too will be brought into the promised land of eternal life. And we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, so I I went I, I would this year is a thing of firsts. I can't walk too much because I'm being recorded. This year is a thing of firsts. We got our first pandemic that I've experienced, uh, and and I decided to do a Bible study uh, for the first time and do a worksheet. A worksheet. So uh, some time has been put kind of been put into this worksheet. However, what I'm not going to do is. Uh, specifically tie myself down to the worksheet. Uh, what I what what I would like is if you have an opportunity throughout the week, read Joshua. Read Joshua. Um, the first worksheet that I have is uh, Glenn. There's a worksheet here too. Um, the first worksheet that I have uh, goes over the first four chapters. Uh, each, in fact, each worksheet is four chapter length. Um, so there's only six worksheets because there's only 24 chapters in Joshua, and if I remember my math correct, 6 times 4 is 24. So that's about the extent of my math. Um, but uh, again, we're not going to tie ourselves down to the worksheet. We're just going to read Joshua. Um, however, it, it would be nice um, during this Bible study, whoever comes, uh, to just read Joshua on your own time uh, throughout the week if you have an opportunity. Um, and, and think about it. Uh, think about what it means. Now, Joshua is in the Old Testament. However, uh, it, it, it's it's a very gospel um, uh, gospel theme uh, book of the Bible. Um, and and how is that? Well, Joshua, Yeshua, is is the Hebrew uh, uh, name for Jesus. Jesus. Uh, is Aramaic for Yahshua. Um, and, and Yahshua, just like Jesus, means, well, Yahshua is, uh, is uh, uh, Hebrew for Yahweh saves. Uh, Jesus, right? You will call him Jesus, for he will what? Save his people from their sins. Um, uh, Joshua uh, does uh, the will of God uh, by bringing his people from uh, the wilderness into the promised land. So, in these first four chapters, as read from this overview, uh, God prepares Joshua and the people of Israel to enter the promised land where he uh, promised them to dwell. Uh, God prepares his people by giving them confidence in his word. Uh, God continues to remind Joshua and Israel that he is with them. That's a big theme there. He is with them. Uh, these first four chapters are meant as much for Joshua as they are for the people of Israel. Um, they're meant for comfort. Uh, these first four chapters are meant for encouragement and comfort. God's words and works in these chapters reflect his grace and mercy. Um, like the Red Sea, we will observe in these first four chapters the people of Israel walking through the Jordan on dry ground. And like these miracles in the wilderness, God will once again reveal his power by exalting Joshua uh, among the people and giving them strength as they begin their witness, um, 
as they begin to witness the miracle in the Jordan, and in this section, uh, God continues to put his people first while continuing the work of salvation for them. Any questions before we start? So, a bit of context, uh, and we'll go into context. In fact, let me read uh, just the first uh, bit of uh, chapter 1. Um, Y'all can follow along as I read. Uh, After the death of Moses, uh, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, um, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over the Jordan, uh, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, uh, to the people of Israel. So before we uh, continue, let's stop there. Uh, this, uh, in, in the context of Joshua, begins after the death of Moses. Moses died in Deuteronomy, uh, at the end of Deuteronomy. Um, and, and obviously Moses was told he wasn't uh, going to go into the promised land. Uh, he had done some things. Uh, I think he kicked a rock, right? Instead of uh, sh- he, he struck it instead of like twice. Yeah, instead of he one. did something, and it, it was against the will of God, uh, against the word of God. And so because of that, the consequence was that he wasn't going to enter the promised land. However, that doesn't mean he wasn't saved. And that doesn't mean that he isn't with God, right? We see Moses in the gospel talking to who? Jesus, right? Um, But in this context, he was not allowed to enter the promised land. That was left up to his assistant, Joshua. Joshua. In this book, Joshua is the Christ-like figure. In this book, Joshua is the Christ-like figure. Uh, let me read uh, more into uh, chapter 1. Uh, as I stop there, let me read. Uh, every place, um, this is uh, verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and, uh, and this uh, Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea toward the uh, toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Uh, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Uh, we'll witness that in this book. Um, we'll witness how that is. Uh, again, uh, let me continue. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Bible version are you reading from? Uh, ESV. Oh, do you all have a different? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sorry. In fact, let me then read from the other version so as not to confuse. <laughs> Well, maybe next week we can try to get this working, if possible. If not, you know, it's always good to stick with the old. Um, Let me get to Joshua here. While I'm getting to Joshua, a couple things of topics. Uh, There are a couple of topics that we, uh, we can talk about in depth, and that's the assurance of faith and the promises of God's Word. Uh... What do we place our faith in? Uh, Think about that. And how does God assure us of salvation? How does God strengthen the sojourner? Think about that. Uh, Just with the first verses we read, how can we answer this? How can we answer this question of uh, what do we place our faith in? What do we place our faith in? God. We place our faith in God and what? His Word, right? Mm -hmm. We place our faith in God and His Word. And His Word is this to Joshua. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. 
being careful to obey all the law of my servant Moses gave to you. And do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Uh, how does God strengthen the soldier? Uh, reminding them of his promises. And that is that he is with them. That he is with them. I will never leave you nor forsake you, he says to Joshua. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Um, do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate, it, uh, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it, right? Um, God's words aren't just the words being spoken uh, to Joshua, but the words for the people are written in the book, um, uh, the book of the law. So uh, in order to uh, be a people of God, they have to uh, dwell in the word. They have to have the word be with them day and night. Uh, in uh, Kings, in 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 First and Second Samuel, in uh, First and Second Kings, and First and Second Chronicles, you see progressively how um, how, uh, how the downfall of Israel uh, because the word was not on them day and night, right? It wasn't until King Josiah in, uh, in Judah, the southern kingdom, where they finally found the book of the law. And he got the whole uh, nation to repent. But God said it was, it was too late. Um, this is, this is uh, God's grace. Now, it is law, it's a command he gives to them, but it's grace because he says, then you will prosper and be successful. He wants them to continue in the words that he gave them. Because he knows that if they don't, guess what's going to happen? It's not going to go well. And we'll see that, um, <coughs> we'll see that in two instances, uh, uh, even in the first few chapters of this book. Um, then again, um, uh, let me begin with uh, uh, verse 8. Do not let the, uh, let me read verse 8 again. Uh, do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate it on day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. If you uh, will be prosperous and successful, uh, then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, God says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So, two things. What sparks, uh, what sparks uh, God to speak to Joshua uh, and, and, and tell him, that it's time to go to the promised land. What event sparks that? Moses' death. Moses death. Right. By the way, this is my mom. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure you all seen her before. If not, <laughs> mom, this this is my congregation. There's my mom. Yeah, the death of Moses sparks God. Uh, telling jo uh, Joshua that it's time to go. Now, the words of comfort that God leaves to Joshua. What are those words? We've heard it countless times now before the end of this chapter. Be strong and courageous. And at the end of it, he says, For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is not just a new thing he tells Joshua. He told this to uh, Moses, as Moses, uh, as he called Moses to go to Egypt. I am. The name of God sparks the, uh, the, the gospel. I am with you. I will be with you. Um, uh, this is not a new thing. And he'll continue to tell Joshua, the prophets, 
He'll continue to tell the judges. Uh, he'll continue to tell Israel. Be he strong and great. Yep. He tells us too. He tells us too. Through his word and his promises. God strengthens and strengthens us through his word. Uh, be strong and courageous. Uh, I will be with Yeah. What, is, uh, what does Jesus say at the end of Matthew chapter? Lo, I am with you always, even till the end of the age. Right? This is not a new thing. <clears throat> so Joshua, um, uh, actually, would, would anybody like to read maybe verses 10 through uh, 10 through 11? And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, prepare your, prepare your provisions, for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan to go into and take possession of the land that the Lord your God has given you to do. You know, this is interesting. Uh, the people of Israel just lost two. Oh, oh, Moses, right? And they've been with Moses for a long time. A long time. Uh, in fact, it's a new generation, right? The old generation has passed away. The rebellious, in some sense, generation is what they call it. So this new generation has been born with Moses as their leader. In uh, the epistle lesson today, uh, Paul speaks to the Philippians and tries to encourage them. And where is Paul when he speaks to the Philippians? He's in jail. He's bound in chains. We need encouragement. Uh, God's people need encouragement. Now, they know Joshua. Uh, they know Joshua. <clears throat> Joshua's been with them. But now it's time for God to set up Joshua as their, as their leader, as the person whom he will uh, talk to as the medium between him and God. Um, so he orders the officers to go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies, get them ready, right? Notice this too, uh, after the death of uh, Moses, uh, it's almost immediate. Uh, it's almost immediate. It, there's a there's sort of a haste in God's language, and there's a sort of a haste in in Joshua's orders. Um, it, it, it's it's now is the time. Get you, I yep. wonder if they're still eating manna at this time. They are, they are. In fact, there is a um, uh, there's a point. Is it in chapter four? No, it's in chapter five. It's in at the end of chapter five. It literally uh, tells us that the manna has stopped, and they get their bread from the grain from the ground of the promised land. So is that what they're trying to offer provisions for food? Probably. Um, and well, and also they gathered provisions throughout their sojourning in the wilderness, through the people they battled, through the the nations they come across, also from the stuff they've gotten from Egypt. Uh, from the stuff they built up, um, and also I think they're 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 building up for the ark as well. Three days from now, you will uh, you will cross the Jordan here and go into and take possession of the land. This is eleven. Oh, you read that too, right? Yeah. Um, and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Uh, but to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave to you. The Lord God has given you uh, rest and has granted you this land. So they are in; they are dwelling in a land. Now, the land that <clears throat> the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the, the, um, uh, the, the half-tribe of Manasseh, they're already dwelling in the land that they're going to dwell in. Um, uh, Moses already granted them that land. Um, and we'll, we'll hear more about them later on in, in chapter, uh, I believe chapter 
uh, 15 or something when we go over the allotment. But right now, they're coming with all of Israel. This is their land. And that's probably the provision they're getting from this land that they've taken uh, with the help of Moses. But they're coming with all of Israel across the Jordan. And why is that? Actually, I was talking to a friend about this. Because they're one body. They're one body. And, 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 and as Paul said to us in Galatians, as I mentioned in my sermon, bear each other's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. They do things as one body. They're the church of Israel right now. And if a part of the people are going to take possession of the land, we're all going. We're all going. Um, and so that's what they're saying. It says, remember the command of Moses, uh, the servant the Lord God gave to you. The Lord God is giving you the uh, rest and grant you this land. Your wives, your children, your livestock may stay in the land. They stay in the land that Moses gave you uh, to the east of the Jordan. But all the fighting men, fully armed, must cross over ahead, uh, ahead of your brothers. Uh, you are to help your brothers until the Lord gives them rest, as he has done for you. Um, until you have uh, taken possession of the land. Uh, your God is giving to them. Uh, after you go back and occupy your own land, uh, which Moses, the servant, has given you, uh, toward the, the sunrise, right, the east and the west. They said going toward, uh, so when they go toward the Jordan, they're going toward the sun going down. That's the west. Uh, sunrise going up, that's the east. So they, they dwell in a land east of the Jordan, whereas the rest of the tribe will dwell into the west of the Jordan, right? I got that right. Sunrise and sunfall. Sunrises in the east, falls in the west, right? I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, if not, then I bet. <laughs> you switched hands up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's just, that's just me not knowing my right from my left. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, so uh, there, 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 there's haste in this first chapter. There's men preparing for battle. Uh, it's time. Uh, it, it, it's time. Um, then they answer Joshua. They uh, being a congregation. Before that, this idea of rest. Uh, this idea of rest. Uh, uh, when we read Joshua, we read battle after battle after battle after battle till about um, till about. Uh, uh, chapter 13, and then chapter 13 till chapter 21, well, no, chapter 14 till about 21, seven chapters, you get just a lot more, and it's geography lesson for all of us on what the the um, the, the promised land is, the makeup of the promised land, and the allotments to the, the, the allotments or the inheritances uh, for the, the tribes of Israel. But before that, you hear battle after battle after battle. And in our mind, we're thinking this was immediately this, immediately this, immediately this. But you've got to pay attention because it'll, 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 it'll have words in there. <coughs> it'll have words in there that uh, 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 distinctly tell us that this was not a, uh, a weak thing. This was a year process. This, this was longer than a year process. This was a constant thing. Uh, at one point in, I think, chapter 12, might be 13, uh, uh, yep. uh, it, it, God even reminds Joshua. He says, whoa, dude, you're old in years. And there's still land for you to be take possession of. So, so he had to sort of shake him back up and remind him. So they, 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 this is like a long process. Yep. So if all of the fighting men left the women and children behind, mm -hmm. were they just under God's protection at that time? Because I would think that they would be very vulnerable. Alone. You know, and that's uh, that that's that's an interesting thing. I think we'll we'll get into this idea of Israel's reputation 
uh, in, in, in the God who fights for them. So, I, you know, there's some concern about, yeah, they probably would be vulnerable. However, at this point, you'll see with Jericho, uh, most of the known world knows who Israel is, and they do not want to contend with this people. So I'm thinking, um, logically, maybe, that um, they're safe due to the reputation of God and the reputation of the people. Um, but we'll probably, as we read this, we'll probably find that answer, too, uh, more than that. Um, yeah, I would think that living in the, in the conditions that they lived in, the women were pretty tough, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, and I don't mean to imply that they should, sure. but I mean, sure. if, if, if a lot of the women's responsibilities were taking care of the children mm -hmm. and watching right. out for them, I guess maybe they would be subdividing responsibilities. <clears throat> sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And things no, so, no. Uh, I wholeheartedly see that. And actually, that crossed my mind too. But I would, I would, uh, my, my, you know, that's actually a good question because I never thought about when reading it. Yeah. I, I had this question. Um, they uh, don't specify the men of valor they mentioned there, meaning uh, those men between a certain age who perhaps have experience in battle. Mm -hmm. So there, there may be uh, a rear guard. Well, yeah, the older fellows and the younger fellows behind as well. Yeah, trying to get left behind and being served. That's true too. Some sort of capacity. And this is a lot of people too, by the way. That's a lot of people. So uh, when we're also talking about Israel uh, in front of Jericho, when we get to chapter six, um, it's not all of Israel. It's mostly the mighty men of Israel, but that's still a lot of people surrounding this. This town. That's my that's my son. Um, <laughs> he wants his thing out of here. Yeah. <laughs> then they answered Joshua, they being the congregation of Israel, all the people said this to Joshua. Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And whenever you uh, you send us and wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey your words, whatever you may command them, will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. I love this. <coughs> the first chapter, the theme of the first chapter is simply be strong and courageous, right? And in and, 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 and this chapter is specifically for Joshua. Right? Imagine Joshua seeing like this is this is almost Solomon, right? When when Solomon was really good at a young age, when uh, he became king of Israel, he went to a mountain to pray to God. And God said uh, in his prayer, uh, God said, Ask anything and I'll give it to you. And instead of praying for riches, for women, for, for all this stuff, for glory or whatever, he prays for wisdom. Wisdom and enlightenment to, to, to be a king of so vast people. Uh, imagine Joshua looking at the people of Israel thinking, I got to be in charge of all these people? I got to be in charge of all these people? Imagine, like, like, imagine that I can barely talk to a people of a hundred uh, is sitting in the pew, you know. <laughs> um, so I couldn't even imagine. But 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 the words here: be strong and courageous. They're from God, and now they're from the people. And and the people speaking here are, are they're speaking from faith. I wholeheartedly believe they're speaking from faith. Um, and they're faithful people right now, uh, all in one accord. Saying, be strong, reminding Joshua that God is with you. Be strong. We're going to listen to you. Anybody who doesn't, uh, we will treat them as we treated those who went against Moses and put them to death. Um, <clears throat> so, there you go. Joshua is the leader. This is how it sets it up. Moses died. Now he, uh, uh, he, uh, now God has taken Moses. Now he has uplifted Joshua as the new leader. 
to bring his people into the promised land. And now it's time to take possession of that land. It's been 40 years coming. Now it's time to take possession of that land. So we get on to chapter 2. Any questions over chapter 1? Um, let's see if I have any questions. What words of comfort does God lead Joshua be strong and courageous? How do these words teach us about God's grace? That's an interesting question. Maybe I'll ask you all that. How do these words teach us about God's grace? Be strong and courageous, uh, for I am with you. Trust in him. Trust in God. And I'll obey his commandments. Yeah. Anything else? It, you know, it's funny. These, these are long answers. They're good answers. Um, um, uh, we, in, like Israel in the wilderness, we stole it. This is not our home, right? This is not our home. Um, uh, we're soldiers, or we're soldiering in a wilderness of sin. Uh, our home is our eternal life uh, in heaven, which God will uh, will come and, and bring us to. Uh, maybe uh, on the last day, or maybe uh, on our death, God will bring us there. Well, in the last day specifically, but maybe before on our death. Day. Anyways, uh, the point is this. Um, <clears throat> there's always time where we can look out, we can think of what's ahead, we can uh, we can get a little uh, uh, a little uh, uh, downtrodden uh, because of uh, people uh, death of loved ones, because of a vast uh, uh, a vast uh, uh, people that we either have to lead um, or or just uh, just just projects that we have to do, or 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 our family being a father. Being a mother, um, uh, dealing with the company, you know, uh, there, there, there are things, uh, and, and God offers us this, this comfort today, be strong, be courageous, uh, for I am with you. Um, God uh, does not forsake the faithful. Um, you know, I always uh, tend to go back to this. I had a philosophy professor um, <coughs> in undergrad. And uh, he's a great professor. Got me into got me to minor in philosophy. However, he, he he used to be a Methodist preacher. And when asked about it, he told them, "Well, uh, my my mom was dealing with cancer, and amidst praying for her, she died. And so, you know, I couldn't grasp the idea that I, you know we're faithful people. We asked God to deliver my uh, my my. How could God do that?" And, and he says, I can't believe in a God that would let my grandmother die. <clears throat> well, I was thinking, and I was kind of smarter as a kid uh, than I am now. And I, and I talked to my former pastor about this. And I said, you know, this situation is interesting. Uh, it's true. We look at that and we say, how could God do something like this? <laughs> but, uh, yes, sir. well... The, the idea is, was God, did God leave him? No. no. No, God was there. What left him? Faith. Faith left him. He believed in uh, the things, you know, the, unfortunately, the best thing for his mother was to be with God. Um, it's hard for us to see that. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, in Mark chapter 9, uh, Jesus, um, uh, was uh, given a boy who was de severely demon possessed, foaming to the mouth. And the father says, If you can, heal him. Jesus says, If you can. <laughs> and uh, he says, Don't you know all things are possible? And he says, Lord, I know I believe. What does he say after that? Help no, my unbelief. unbelief. That God doesn't just die for sin, uh, commandments 2 through 10. He dies for commandments 1, 2. He believes for you on those days that, guess what? It's just going to be hard to believe, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so we, like Joshua, can face these situations. God's word will always bring comfort. This is why, again, why does God say that? Let my word be on your mouth. 
meditated on you, uh, or with you day and night. His word brings promises. His words bring comfort. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Did I spend too much time on that? Yeah, I might have. You know, see, we're probably going to go slower than my Thursday class. Uh, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, uh, Thursday class, you, we got a longer time period, so we can get through a lot. Plus, well, we might not because I like to talk a lot. Too. Anyway, chapter two. Chapter two. Um, then Joshua, the son of Nun, secretly sent two spies uh, from <clears throat> from Shittim. I said it, uh, and, and I said it with boldness from that place. Uh, go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. Uh, so they went and they entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there with her. The king of Jericho was uh, told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who uh, bring out the men who came to you and entered the house, because uh, they have come uh, come to spy out the whole land. <clears throat> Let me turn my page on my Bible study. Uh, but the woman had taken the two men and hidden them, and she said, "Yes, men came to me, but I did not know where they came from." At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, the men left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up to them. <coughs> Pardon me. What's up? You're smiling. Oh, I'm just, I'm just thinking that's a, that's a page of a little white lie. Well, yeah. <laughs> Big white lie. You know, you know that's interesting. Like she's a prostitute and she's lying, and through that, still God. Working. Yeah, um, you know, we, 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 I guess the hard thing is to answer what, what is a lie? But I want to answer that because I didn't ask that in my, no, but that is interesting. Hmm. I was reading uh, about the Eighth Commandment uh, protecting people mm -hmm. you know, in certain situations. So this is interesting. It was a lie, right? But as far as the Eighth Commandment goes, it says uh, protect their reputation, speak well of them, um, or defend them. Uh, that's the Fifth Commandment, right? People protecting Jews that were elected. That's that's uh, that's an answer there too. Um, no, that's that's actually good. I didn't think about going that route. I saw you smile. Um, what are your thoughts on that too? Well, I guess when what's occurring or what's being asked of her would lead to a different kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if if she would be specifically handing them over. You know, possibly to their death if she did that. So, you know, I think I think if you look at the bigger picture, like you talked about hiding Jews in World War II, mm -hmm. if you look at the big picture, is it is it better to hide them and take your chances that you're going to be caught, you know, and do that, or turn them over? You yeah. Know, even if you have to lie to say, oh no no no, we don't have any. You know. Well, this is this is one of those things um, we're always err on the side of grace. Right. Right. And I think this is the best construction of the Eighth Commandment and even the Fifth Commandment. <coughs> the Fifth Commandment, you shall not murder. In some sense, maybe uh, telling them where the spies are might lead to their their own murder or their own death, as, as Jill mentioned. But in some cases, um, either way, uh, uh, Rahab. Uh, was there with her words, um, sent them to go off. She, um, she, um, she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them uh, 
under the stalks of flax uh, where she laid on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road um, uh, that leads to the fords of, uh, of the Jordan. And as uh, soon as the pursuers had gone out, uh, the gate was shut. Um, <clears throat> Rahab is a prostitute. Um, yet, what's interesting, uh, what, what is interesting about Rahab? What do we know about Rahab? She loves strangers into her life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. Jill was getting somewhere. <laughs> she's in the lineage of Christ. I don't Christ. recall exactly how, but I know she's, but she's in the lineage of Christ. In fact, Matthew, I'm not going to make you turn there. Uh, Matthew chapter 1. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 1. Uh, it says, uh, Abraham was father to Isaac, Isaac father to Jacob, Jacob father to Judah, Judah father to Perez and Terah, uh, the mother was Tamar, uh, Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amminadab, Amminadab the father of Nashim, Nashim the father of Salom, Salom the father of Boaz, who was the, uh, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Uh, Boaz the father of Obed, whose mother was Rahab. Ruth. So you got both, you got Rahab and Ruth all in one, uh, all encompassing uh, two uh, back then two Gentiles, but uh, uh, two um, uh, people outside of Israel brought into the lineage of Christ. Isn't that awesome? Yes, and and this person does allow strangers in her room, uh, or, or, or sorry, not her room, her house. However, there's a reason why she allows that. Uh, before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof, and she said to them, I know the Lord has given this land to you, and, uh, and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. I, again, I point back to, to that reputation, why they make my... Uh, be okay with leaving their women and their children. Yes, Amy. How, okay, if the women and the men were separated from each other, mm -hmm. how did Rahab get involved with the men? No, no, um, so Rahab was not a part of Israel at this time. Oh, okay. She was a part of uh, the, the nation of Jericho. She mm -hmm. was a part of those people. Okay. She will be a part of Israel. Uh, uh, when the fall of Jericho happens, they save Rahab and they bring her into uh, Israel. And as we know, she's the mother of Boaz. And we know Boaz. At that point in time, Boaz was, get this, ruthless. <laughs> okay, all right, that's my only thing. Um, anyway, uh, uh, I know the Lord has uh, given this land to you. So she knows of the reputation. And how does she know? We have heard how the Lord dried up the water from the Red Sea. For you, uh, Red Sea for you, when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to uh, uh, Sion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan. Right, those are the two kings that uh, Moses overcame. So that... Um, the, the half-tribe of Manasseh, the Reubenites, and the Gadites could have that land. Those were the two kings over there. They've heard about that. Um, uh, whom uh, you completely destroyed. Uh, when we heard of it, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Uh, <clears throat> And here, here is a confession, I think, right? I think this is a plain confession from Rahab. Um, 
Um, I think uh, she confesses the Lord to be God. Uh, so here, here, here's a question I have. Um, considering chapter 2, we're at this verse, we can also think about fear and God, judgment uh, of who should we fear the most? God. So in the midst of lying to, uh, to, to a king uh, in the guards and facing death herself, right? Who does she fear the most? God, right? Uh, her fear is placed. And how does God reveal his righteousness to the world? Well, through his son, and, 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 and his righteousness at this point, his mishpah, is shown by his works. And what works uh, were revealed to the world? What works at this point were revealed to the world? He controls creation. He controls creation. The Red Sea, right? Uh, Rahab says, we heard about what your God did to Pharaoh in the Red Sea. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. The whole world knows about what happened in Egypt. Because Egypt was the uh, the richest uh, in how I've got I've got like two minutes left. And we'll start we'll start uh, midway uh, through here next week. Um, but Egypt uh, was rich with gods. It wasn't a, only a rich society, but it was rich with gods. And these monotheists, their god defeated and defeated the the the, the big one uh, Pharaoh. Even. Uh, so they they God's works uh, reveal His righteousness. God's works reveal his, his justice and his mercy. Um, his works in uh, defeating these nations, but his works also in saving Israel. Uh, that should give us comfort. <clears throat> because what's about to come is judgment for these other nations. <coughs> I just have like a tickle in my throat. <clears throat> what's coming is the judgment for these nations <clears throat> and we'll see it we'll bear witness to it um, and he's already starting that judgment because guess what fear has already overcome Jericho which is a great sign and we'll talk about this next week it's a great sign that guess what it's time to it's time to take care of them. It's time to take care of them. Um, and we'll talk about sort of last day things with um, with the fall of Jericho and everything else. Any questions? We, we kind of took our pace with this. We didn't get through four chapters. I didn't think we would. Um, uh, so uh, please, by all means, keep this worksheet. Uh, and, and if you have spare time, Read Joshua. Uh, read the first four chapters. We will uh, we will talk about it. We'll go over it. Necess I won't necessarily try to go word for word um, with each chapter. If 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 I know that y'all are reading it, if y'all have questions beforehand, if y'all are looking at it, then we can just simply overview, and we can get through it that way as well. But. Um, other than that, in, any last minute questions? All right, let's end with uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, guys, very much. Thank you, Steve.